Yeah, help, help, Quincy Jones, help. E.T. tricked the other kids with a glowy book and grabbed that little bitch from Sidekicks, dragging him into an alleyway. Hit it! Will Smith, Tone Lock, Queen Latifah, Ice-T, Kid and Play, and Heavy D all contribute to the performance in the middle of the street. All together, I need your help in the worst way. Let's all take a puff of the cause here on Earth Day. What the fuck? Did Will Smith just tell everybody to smoke weed for Earth Day? Oh, and even explosive things you do to get your apartment clean. Turbicon furniture, polish and benzene. Ammonia paint disinfectant and battery. Collars that kill all ticks and fleas. The even spray to kill ants and roaches. You got a way to be disposed. Got proper doses. Hey, enough before this thing gets flagged already. <laughs> Back outside the hospital steps, Murphy Brown is reporting on Mother Earth's condition. She's probably sitting there right now throwing up blood and guts into a rusty hospital bucket in a roped off hallway because doctors are afraid she may contain some unknown virus. And there's kids reading from a glowing book of magical answers, taking you there live. Acid rain, air pollution, and global warming are problems we can do something about. I would just like to clarify that once the alien was finished mating with me, I was able to grab the book and run away. Coach? Yeah, thank you. Hey, uh, uh, Coach Stewart, Kennedy High. Get the hell off my lawn! What we can use less energy is to make sure that those appliances we use every day, you know, watch your furnace, your air conditioner, your refrigerator, you make sure that those things are set properly to run efficiently. Right? That's what I'm going to do at my house, huh? I'm also going to check the water heater down at the gym, make sure that's not set too high. Oh, listen up, guys. Everyone listen to Eden here. He has something really important to say. Transportation is one of the largest sources of air pollution. Wait, what What the fuck? Oh, oh, well, I guess. Sorry, kid. Big oil wins again. So, anyway, the Huxtables are sitting around their front room watching the Earth Day special on TV as well. They begin talking about how each one of them can help save the environment and some money, like by not leaving the refrigerator door open while they look for something to eat, or not opening the lids of pots when cooking until the time to serve the food. Excuse me, can I have some ice cream? 90% of our energy comes from fossil fuels and nuclear power, huh? Now that means that 90% of the time when anybody is using energy for anything, they're creating toxic emissions. Uh, no. Coach, that doesn't exactly transfer over in the math department. Just stick with the refrigerator and the thermostat settings for now, okay? Now come on, folks, we can do it! Yeah. Hey! Hey, butthole, she's probably sleeping. Why would you scream like that? Ugh, another PSA? Come on, guys, these are getting old. Yay, oil change. I bet my car has a boner now. Back at the podium in Town Square, Carrot Top's pit hair shaped into a vagina, Melanie Mayron, pours out water from a jug. You know, that's probably the first time Melanie Mayron and jugs were talked about in the same sentence. We can't be wasting our water. Stop bathing. Us gingers walk amongst the moonlight and are cleansed of our natural born sins every night by our god Pan. Ocean drains like toxic oh waste my god. dumps. It's, it's god. Don't pour your paint down the drain. Just drink it like I do. It's how I get my rosy shine. We need clean water to live. We do. We do. I'm going to recycle this. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to say? Walter. Walter Sampson, played by the future President of the United States and eventual creator of existence himself, Morgan Freeman, as he has something to say about the destruction of the planet. And what worries me, people, is the number of trees being cut down. See, I don't think people understand the value of trees. Well, I'll tell you. Forests are the lungs of the planet. Now, if the planet stops breathing, we stop. Interesting. So then what are the mountains, Earth? Big jagged titties? Every year, a forest the size of the state of Tennessee gets cut down. Now, what can we do about that? Um, I'm not sure... Let's plant trees! Can... Okay, don't smite me. Huh? Hey, the dating game. Wow, they got Jim Lang. Cool. And Gina Davis as the Bachelorette. That's interesting. I guess Jeff wasn't cutting it. Okay, ask away. Okay. Bachelor number one, could you describe your ideal date? First suitor played by five-time NBA championship creator and Vidal Sassoon Streamline Aeronautics decision test pilot Pat Riley. Coast uh, maybe to Carmel, uh, stop at Clint's place, uh, have a romantic candlelight dinner, 
And then after that, just uh, continue on up to San Francisco, Union Street, wonderful little dessert restaurant. And then the rest is up to you. Oh, God, keep it in your pants, Pat. Sounds interesting. Okay, uh, bachelor number two, same question. Well, Kim, I'd say I'd jet you up to my private villa and my private helicopter. We could dig into my private account and purchase a private room where you can start by privatizing my privates and privates. Okay, uh, bachelor number three. You know, I've been asked this same question hundreds and hundreds of times. <laughs> What's the question? What is your ideal date? Oh, well, first I think it should be organically grown and in a right climate. No, 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 bachelor number three, we're talking ideal date here. When you meet a woman, what's the first thing you look for? A room. Oh, that Rodney. Objectification was always so in then, top of your game. Then we'd go bike riding on a bicycle built for one. <laughs> After that, I'd, uh, Take her on the beach. We'll go for a swim. Hey, that gives me a chance to show off my body, huh? <coughs> <coughs> then towards evening, I'd rent a canoe. And you could just sit there for two hours in the moonlight and watch me paddle. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Let's paddle around for ten minutes and you stroke out and we have to get rescued by the Coast Guard. So, of course, with that line, Rodney gets the girl because of his goofy charm and shitty eco-friendly sap answer. The writers are really starting to stretch for things to say, but oh well. We get some great AI bulging and stupid little sex jokes. It looks like the suit didn't help you at all, huh? <laughs> and you, don't you have homework to do? So why weren't The Bachelors number one and two not chosen, Gina? Bachelors number one and two just didn't seem to realize the additional amounts of CO2 and nitrogen oxides that would be released on our dates. But bachelor number three, although I did find him a little revolting. A little? His head looks like a punched in squash. Ecologically appealing. In fact, he really pushed my buttons with all that environmental talk. I only hope he can whisper it as well as he speaks it. Oh, fucking gross. Really? You shot down a trip in a private jet because of fossil fuel emissions and went with a guy that wanted to hump you on a bike? You're my kind of chick. Hey, honey. The environment's getting better already, huh? Why, are you planning to become extinct by the end of this show? <laughs> ah, the camera zoom is stuck! Uh-oh, she's having a wet dream of father time. According to the EPA, hazardous waste is produced in this country at the rate of 700,000 tons a day. What? How many? That's 1,400,000,000 pounds every single day. That's impossible. How could that be? I'll tell you how that can be. Lots of dead air here. My name's Charles McIntyre. So finally at the podium, we meet Charles, one of the owners of a large plant in town that had recently done some pretty shady deals in order to cheaply dispose of toxic waste from his factory by dumping it in a secret area down by the river. Later, having been caught for illegally dumping the toxins, he has taken a court for the cause of birth defects in babies from mothers drinking contaminated water of nearby streams of his waste site. His company spends tens of thousands of dollars on lawyers and ends up winning the case, but feels completely guilty about what he's done, deciding to come clean at the podium about how he's contributed to the destruction of the planet. You know who needs to be ashamed? <laughs> Can we stick to one fucking program? Jesus, this review is jumbled enough with all the goddamn PSAs and characters being introduced. After that, we're flung into a basketball game between the Lakers and who gives a shit. Michael Douglas sits courtside watching the Earth Day special on a portable TV because courtside Lakers tickets are a dime a dozen? Hey, maybe after halftime, he'll go grab a hot dog and take a nap until the game's over. Michael, hey, Magic, how you feeling? I'm hurting, but not as much as Mother Earth. How's she doing? 
Standing in foul territory near the Lakers bench is Magic Johnson dressed in a suit, watching from the sidelines. Michael notices that Robert's plastic beer cup is empty and wants to know what he's planning on doing with it afterwards. No man, you're gonna recycle. Recycle or I'm gonna bite my lip and spit blood in your open eye. You know Americans only recycle 1% of their plastic items, did you know that? No. And those items are usually from other countries that broke within the time it took to bring it back from the store to your house and couldn't be placed in a recycling bin anyway because of all the chemicals it was made with. Who's really to blame here? Back at Carla and Vic's, we get to enter Vic's dream of him making it to his friend's place for that poker game mentioned earlier. Okay, how fucking cool would this be? Playing cards with Dan Aykroyd, Chevy Chase, Rick Moranis, while they're in character. Is it too late for me to cast my vote for Poker Night at the Inventory 3? As the dream goes along, Chevy and Rick start throwing out some ecologically unfriendly jokes Vic's way, making him feel uncomfortable and begin to panic with all the hurtful things they say. Why don't you come up to the woods this weekend with us? We'll do a little squirrel baseball, some mink mugging, maybe a little barbecue roadkill and some bunny bashing. What do you think? <laughs> Look at his face! Oh, he's he's he it. <laughs> hey, Vic, you want a beer? Here you go. Yeah, you gotta relax. You know what we do with these things when we're through with them? We recycle them. <laughs> That's the way. Can somebody tell me why Vic frankly starts giving a damn about the environment enough to panic like this? Seriously, a few moments ago he was bored as shit reading the newspaper while Mother Earth was choking to death on screen. Animals catching fire and the world exploding in that documentary that looked like Trent Reznor's leaked sex tape Doc Brown showed us in the future box. And he was totally fine. Hey Vic, here's your chips and here's your dip! <laughs> but the second his buddies start talking shit, all of a sudden this dude is worried. So after Vic has had enough, he makes a break for the door, leaving his mean poker buddies behind. Oh, happy Earth Day, Vic! Vic, this is all your fault. Do you think the camera height is accurate? The kids from the hospital steps enter Mother Earth's room, led in by Doogie Hauser, wandering over towards her bed for a quick visit. I'm so glad the 90s style died off. The loud colors, the bunchy clothing, everyone looks like chimps playing with discount wrapping paper. I came to say hello. How are you feeling? Oh, have you significantly reduced your annual garbage output by at least 50% and cleaned up all the oceans? No? Then probably still pretty fucking shitty. Jesus, kid, she just got here a few hours ago. I'm surprised she's even awake with the fucking she's taken the last couple hundred years. But instead, they decide to hang around as she begins to reminisce about the first Earth Day back in the 1970s. And people were talking, saying all the right things. They got excited. I got excited, and then something happened that changed everything. Wait, what? So you're telling me that all it took was you waiting until the next day to give up on us? Jeez, Ma, you're expecting results rather quickly. Sitting in the front room of TV's most horrible family in the 90s, Amanda Beers playing Marcy Darcy, is watching the Earth Day special, finding the whole situation terrible that people could actually destroy the planet like they do. Meanwhile, Al, Peggy, Kelly, and Bud are sitting on the couch using cans of hairspray and tossing garbage around their home. Surprisingly, the Bundys start talking about how it's everybody's job to help fix the planet, and they all begin to stand up. You're right, son. Let's get started right now. You with me? Yeah! But only to start laughing at the fact that Marcy stood up thinking they were being serious. You people are beasts. It's this time, let's really save the Earth. <laughs> I mean, what do you do when you're done with your aluminum cans? Well, first we do this, then we toss them on your lawn. Instead of arguing, Marcy ends up thanking the Bundys for their behavior because without them throwing garbage all over her lawn, she would never have been able to purchase items with the money she made from recycling it. Hey, wait a minute. I mean, our garbage is worth money? Well, yeah, so to speak. Of course, you've got to separate it first. The Bundys realize that their house is literally covered in potential dollars and they make a mad dash to the kitchen for their garbage can to pick out the material to sell. 
But they're quickly discouraged when Marcy mentions the Earth could only survive in this state for as little as a hundred years. The Bundys find that time frame way too long to care about since they'll all be dead anyway, and they decide to go back to what they were doing. <laughs> hundred years! I thought this was an emergency! Yeah. Back in the Earth Day special, another PSA begins about discussing how recycling within inner city environments has created jobs and opportunities to clean up their way of life by simply managing the waste, and nobody gives a shit. At the center of town, the kids are still making suggestions from out of the book as an overly worried Meryl Streep wanders off to go find herself something to drink at the local cafe across the street and drown away her sorrows and guilts and booze. Wandering inside the tavern, she is met by Kevin Costner, playing bartender behind the counter. I need a drink. I need a drink, please. Okay. How about a beer? Beer? Any, yeah, fine. That would be great. <sighs> what if we have screwed it up so bad that they can't fix it? I mean, I think it's crazy what we're doing, you know? Sure is. It's very, very, very bad. Yeah, making an Earth Day special with a ton of these A-list actors and no story? Ridiculous, I know. So, you know. You know, I used to be scared like you. I also grew gills and started breathing water. Problem solved. Yeah, you did. Are you kidding? I, I was so scared I pretended that none of it was happening. But that didn't make it any better, so I decided to do something about it. So Kevin tries to play it cool, showing her that worrying about it to the point of being paralyzed with fear, thinking you're unable to fix the problem, is just as bad as not doing anything about it in the first place. Despite Kevin's assurances that everything will be better if people just tried, Meryl still doesn't believe that he's correct. You need to do something. What? Think I should get a low flow aerator? Yeah. Do something instead of being afraid. You do something, you're gonna start to feel better about yourself. Here. Take a chance. Take, but take your time. Alright? Don't rush this. This uh this could change your life. And it's good, three points. He tells her that she just saved him three hours of runtime on his television by doing what she did. And if everyone did the same thing, it would make a drastic difference. I did? Yes. How did I do that? It's um, the energy it takes when you, you know, the, when they're the old cans and it. You mean? The energy it takes to make a new can is more than what it takes to recycle an old one. Yeah, I got it. You feel better? I feel better. Good. I'm not sure it has anything to do with the environmental movement, however. You know, Meryl's looking like she's getting a little wet from Kevin being so suave and starting to realize he might be right. You better go to that rally. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gross. You might have to throw away that stool now. What we keep hearing over and over again tonight is the importance of recycling. But most people don't know how. It's very simple. Watch this. Oh. Oh, that was nice. Hi, I'm Gary Peterson, and we started this program back in 1972 with $2 in a Volkswagen bus. But I really don't give a shit about starting my own recycling plant, so next. Back at the podium, Jane Fonda is playing a character called Helen, telling the story of her daughter that had a form of extremely rare cancer that was supposed to kill her in a few days but was helped by an experimental cure from a small plant called the rosy periwinkle, which is only found in the rainforest of Madagascar, that are now in danger of being cut down and losing the cure forever. She might only live for four more days. Can you imagine what it's like as a parent to hear that about your child? So after the commercial break, Doogie appears from the hospital doors and makes his way to the podium. The crowd is murmuring with anticipation at what the condition of Mother Earth might be. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to report on Mother Earth's condition. I wish I had better news, but I don't. Doogie explains that things won't get any better until we actually go out there and start doing something. Are we actually going to go out and do the things that we say we're going to do? 
Are we going to go out there and actually make a difference to vote? Vote for the best representatives to lead us into an ecologically better future? If I'm going to die, I'm going to get laid before I do. Mother Earth doesn't think enough of us are going to do any of these things. And I'm afraid she may be right. At the bar where everyone knows your name, Sam Malone realizes that this is a real problem and begins to get everyone at the bar together to figure out what they're going to do to help. The Earth's in trouble, and I guess it's up to us. It's up to us? The Earth is in trouble. What's going well, on? you know, for my part, uh, I was thinking of uh, including a personal handwritten note to each and every person on my mail route to encourage them to recycle their junk mail in catalogs. <gasps> well, yeah, and the handwritten note that I've included. No, better yet, I'll just write it on a junk mail. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah, that's pretty good, but I think defacing people's property might get you in a little trouble there, Cliff. Hey, and half of what would be considered today's Christie Alley decides to help by walking to the laundromat instead of driving. Even Woody gets in on the sudden eco-movement. You know, if none of us drove anywhere, it would really help out. I think you're missing the point, Woody. Well, wait a minute now, wait. Woody, that makes sense. No, that makes zero sense. Don't encourage that kind of stupidity, Norm. You're better than that. So just by sitting around and doing nothing for the rest of our lives, we're doing our part. We're doing it! We are all fucked. At the podium in Town Square outside the hospital steps, Doogie Hauser is introducing people on how they're coming up with ideas about things that they're going to do to save the planet. I can start a recycling effort on my block! Yeah, well, condoms are recyclable. And I'm going to start recycling my oil from now on. Big ring! And I'm going to plant these trees and I sure as hell won't be wasting paper anymore either! Yeah, who's the sap now? I'm not quite sure what's happening here. It's difficult to describe. Without certain annihilation and coming destruction, Murphy's kind of confused on what to report. The atmosphere is charged, electric. Suddenly, people are coming alive. I want to organize a committee with the mayor's office to institute a recycling program. Yeah, you go do that. Suddenly, Doogie spots the hospital doorways opening, with every man rolling Mother Earth out in a wheelchair to an eerily silenced crowd. Every man accompanies Mother Earth as she stands to make it to the podium. The crowd cheers. Okay, everybody can stop pretty clapping now. What you have done here tonight is wonderful. And I thank you for it, truly. It's almost enough to make me believe that you really mean it this time. Way to suck the fucking air out of the room. Well, you mind if I drop the mask for just a minute? Wait a minute, what's going on? <sighs> I'm Bette Midler. <sighs> Holy shit, that's not Mother Earth. How could I have been so blind? And Bette Midler tells about how it's going to take even more than this to help the environment. It's going to take a whole lot more, though, than just one television show. Or some dumbass YouTuber with a history of liking crappy movies. And all our good intentions to save Mother Earth. And I'm Robin Williams. And these are Wayne Newton's clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here tonight to say that we gave her the information. Now it's up to you to get active. You can do it. It makes a difference. Go out there. Recycle. You can do that. Vote with your hearts. Vote with your hands. Vote with your dollars. And vote with your votes. Don't just wait for the politicians. Come on. They're going to read an opinion poll one day and go, maybe now I'll do something. <laughs> so what do we know? We know that the Earth does not belong to us. We only inherit it for a very brief moment in time, and then we pass it along to our children. We're a kinder, gentler nation. Come on. Let's act like one. We know that all things in nature are connected, that all things are interdependent. And so we know that whatever happens to the Earth will surely happen to the people of the Earth. We didn't weave this incredible web of life. We are only a part of it. Whatever we do to this precious planet, in the end, we're doing it to ourselves. And so we're counting on you. Yeah, we're counting on you. You have to get off your cans and recycle. Tell him, Mama. Recycle! Reduce! Replace! Reuse! 
And most of all, rejoice, because you have an incredible gift here. Don't blow it. Wise up. Yeah. yeah. Robin Williams and Bette Miller give their final speeches before we go back to Carla and Vicks. Carla turns off the TV as the Earth Day special ends, asking Vic if he's okay because he's nodding and acting really weird. You okay? I have no idea what the fuck you're doing. Is it the big one? What's going on, Danny? What are you <laughs> thinking about? Really want to know? Yeah, that's why I asked. Don't laugh. I won't laugh. I was thinking about our grandchildren. Ew, this movie went full circle. We're back to thinking about these two having sex again. What grandchildren? We don't have any. I know we don't have any, but we will someday. And, and, and what if the worst case of this happens? Worst case scenario, we actually get to see you two get it on. And they ask us, did we see this coming? Did we know that this could happen? What are we going to tell them? What, are we going to lie to them? Or tell them we were too busy? No, we can't do that. Mm -mm. What are we going to tell them, that we didn't care enough? I don't know. What are we going to tell our grandchildren? One day nope, that's enough of that. So, in conclusion, the Earth Day special was an interesting little experiment by Time Warner for ecologically educating the American masses about issues like global warming and pollution while entertaining us with some skits from A-list actors, famous singers, and pop culture references from the 1990s. It's kind of like ordering a regular drink with your meal and getting the diet equivalent. It's similar to what you wanted, but it tastes like someone stirred it with their dick. Despite all that I've said, this is by far one of my most favorite made-for-TV movies that have an emphasis on environmental safety. Actually, it's one of the only ones that I know of, but still. I wouldn't say that it was horrible, it was just boring as fuck in certain parts. Especially with all the really lengthy dialogue that could have been condensed into a few sentences. PSAs that could have easily been avoided if only they combined them into a few of the A-lister skits so they could have mentioned them in a brief summary of information rather than a huge 10 minute long documentary on how to dispose of oil or where to go to start a recycling business and it would have probably stuck better because we all know that famous people have way more say and they're way more impactful and way more important than some scientist or doctor or educated professional that spent most of their time trying to learn all the correct answers. Who wants to listen to some boring asshole rant and rave for an hour and some video? Oh, yeah, well. You've heard a lot of information here tonight, and there's still more to know. There are several books out now, like this one, Save Our Planet, 750 simple things that we can all do right now. We urge you to read more and learn more. Go to your local library or bookstore and pick up one of these books. Or for more information, you can write the Environmental Protection Agency in Washington, D.C. And stay tuned to your local news tonight to find out what you can do in your own area. Remember, it's up to all of us to save our environment. We can make a difference. <laughs>